Welcome to New Day Cleveland. I'm David Moss, and yes, we are on the road again with a show called Homegrown. What does homegrown mean? Well, it means either grown, made at home, or locally. And of course, we're talking about people who have a passion for these things, such a great passion that they end up in business with a store or a way to sell these items to you. So we're gonna take a look at a whole bunch of places. We're gonna start in Seville, and no, we're not talking about a barber. We're talking about a place that's interested in driftwood and grapevines. That's right, it's called Studio 5 West Design. Studio 5 West Design Market in Seville, Ohio. Garden themed home decor and holiday decor. The seasonal decor changes. I'm a little bit ahead because I make most of what's here. Definitely I have a passion for nature. I grew up here. I'm a fine arts major from Columbus College of Art and Design. So with this one, this is the bottom layer and I'll build and build and build. So I like to do something that is kind of interesting building out from um, the base, I like to use straw base um, because it is biodegradable. I do keep that in mind. A lot of what I use to make my pieces is local sustainable harvest. We have a farm that I grew up on in Lafayette Township. And so I go out and get inspired there and then come back here and, and make my work. They're here almost like the seasons. They're here to enjoy. They're not forever, but they do last quite a while. We have a lot of arts and crafts made by local makers. So we have photography, handmade soaps, handmade candles, handmade jewelry, Ukrainian eggs. I make wreaths that are nature inspired. Grapevine harvest is every October, like the beginning weeks of October. And this is all a sustainable harvest, wild grapevine from my family's farm in Lafayette Township. And I can decorate them any way that you would like. So they can be decorated with dried naturals, which these are from the farm, or I can do silks. And any sizes are available. Right now, the things that are in season, we have grasses that are in season that I love working with. The hydrangeas are drying, the thistles, the leaves are gonna start coming out. And it's a great way for people to bring some of the beauty of Medina County into their homes. I also make centerpieces and other um, natural themed home and garden decor. Cleveland Shoreline is definitely an inspiration. Walking the shoreline with my family, um, my mother's family is from Cleveland and that's how we started. So we would go comb the beaches, pick up things that were interesting, sea glass, driftwood, bring it home and build it up. It's a great time of year to come down to Seville. I'm open every Saturday, I host an open house from 11 to 5. My hours are by appointment during the week. And Thursday and Friday, I'm here working on things in the studio. I do a lot of special orders and custom projects at that time. So come on down and check it out for yourself. So if you're interested in any of that great stuff from Studio 5 West Design Market, they're in Seville, and of course you can get all their stuff online. Okay, we're talking about in the 216. We're talking about local. We are in the 216 on Coventry. I'm with Jenny, and Jenny, you're a bit of an artisan, I would say, right? Yes. Or are you yes. a collector? Um, I'm both, you're actually, both. Okay. as you can see. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you come <laughs> in this store and you walk around and it's like, at first you can't figure it out. But right. then, once you start to focus a little bit, like these items here, what, what's the story yes. on these? That's actually how I started um, and how I met most of these wonderful um, people in here. It says 216 um, right here. Yes, I do a lot of area code um, and Cleveland Pride jewelry. Um, I do them custom for people. I also have done a couple of custom lines for different shops around here, Pure Enchantments in Rocky River, uh, Mayfair Creations in Lakewood. And I can do anything you want, actually. But mainly, we focus on the Heart Ohio, which is actually part of our logo. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we, I've been actually doing that for about five years. You so. know, the whole idea of this thing was, you know, homegrown. We're talking about people that maybe start something as a hobby or a passion mm -hmm. and turns into a business. Right. Is that your story? Yes, absolutely. I started doing it. My son was in college. I was a little bored, which is kind of ridiculous because I was working full time, but I was still bored. And <laughs> so I started doing it and I started selling it. And then I just kept meeting awesome people, um, really talented people. This opportunity came up about two years ago and um, I decided to open it up. It was supposed to be temporary, but we decided Look out. that, uh, right. We decided to keep it going, so. We should have a warning under this piece right now because you've got a bunch of stuff over there where people can start picking up the little pieces and putting them on the chains themselves and yes. do it yourselfers. And who knows, yes. you may 
instigate or inspire someone to be doing the same thing that you're doing. Sure, absolutely. Well, I hope so. Yeah. So yeah, I've actually troll uh, Facebook and Instagram a lot. If I see somebody you know who's got something really interesting, I'll send them a message and ask them if they're interested in bringing things in. Sometimes they haven't even started selling yet. Yeah, so that's so, their, their first spot. Right. So okay, we say in the 216 here. Mm -hmm. So you start to look around like this wall right here. It looks like yes. something I may have seen on New Day Cleveland before. Oh yeah, that's Jim Lanza. Um, his company is called Foundry Woodprints. Um, Jim actually has about 120 different coaster designs here. Um, he has bottle openers, um, boards, large boards, medium-sized boards. Terrific stuff. I, I like also the maps with the name Chagrin Falls. There's a map with it, Ohio State. There's a map with that. That's some pretty great stuff. All kinds of like little tiny items. We've got mm -hmm. decorator items. And what's the story on the uh, blackboard wall? Um, you know, we started that because we kind of, we weren't really sure what kind of color scheme we wanted to go, go to. And I kind of liked the idea because it's Coventry and I kind of grew up around here of people coming in and signing it. And it just kind of grew from there. So now actually people come in here and they come in just to sign it or take their picture in front of it, which makes us feel good. So it's actually really part of the whole vibe for us now. So. I like a sign to you that says, since 1903, Coventry Village is the yes. place to be. And right next to that says, make art, not war. That sort of fits with the whole Coventry vibe, doesn't it? Of course, absolutely. Samuel, I have to have that on there. Samuel L. Jackson eating a cheeseburger right next to that. Right. Now, this is a guy who knows a lot about <laughs> style, Samuel L. Jackson. You know, he's really famous for wearing cool clothes, different hats, different hair pieces, that kind of sure. thing. Well, we're going to go to the Fifth Street Arcade, where here's a guy who's in the fashion himself. What not? Bowtie Company is the premier source for men's accessories, especially uh, custom bow ties, pocket squares, socks, scarves. I try to do everything you can for uh, men's accessories. And when you go into a room full of suits and ties, you're not going to remember any of the neckties, but that guy that walks in with a bow tie, you're going to remember. I make the bow ties. I could be in a fabric store for hours, you know, just looking for fabrics that I really love. <laughs> I'm always teaching every day how to tie a bow tie. It's like tying a shoe. If you look from here to here, it's like the shape of a fish. So if you take the mouth of the fish and you put it where your top button is on the right side, take your left side over the top, underneath, like you're tying a, a necktie or a shoe, snug it tight, make the shape of your bow tie, with the fold to the right. This is the, the width you want it. You want it nice and even. You take the long side right over the center, close the flaps and hold it in your left hand. If you see there's a gap right here, you take the mouth of this fish and you start feeding it through halfway. Take your folded sides, pull them tight, and just kind of straighten it out. Does it look good? <laughs> I want people to be able to feel good about themselves. So when you put on my bow tie and you walk out, into the world and people see it and they compliment you, it builds your self-esteem, makes you feel good. When you look good, you feel good. I do have some Cleveland sports teams. I'll do some other teams if I get requests. I try not to do a lot of the more gimmicky ties. I try to stick more to fashion, but the ugly sweater holiday bow ties I had to do because everybody does ugly sweater holiday parties. What made me initially do it was that I couldn't find bow ties I liked. And when I did, they were really expensive. So I did a little research. I bought a $25 sewing machine off of Craigslist, looked at YouTube, and got to work. The first ones were awful, of course. <laughs> but you know, when you're determined and you keep trying, you get better. So. Once uh, they got better, people wanted to start buying them, and eventually my job got in the way of this business, so I left my job, and I've been doing it full-time for uh, a couple years now. It's just fulfilling to be able to do something I love to do, get paid for it, but also make people feel good in the process. And again, when you put it on, and I challenge people all the time, wear one, See how many compliments you get. You'll be back for more. The Whatnot Bowtie Company is located in the Fifth Street Arcade. Okay, coming up after the break, one of a kind timepieces.
Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. It's our homegrown show. And what could be more homegrown than a guy who makes watches in his basement? Or as he likes to say, timepieces. I make handmade jewelry and timepieces um, using uh, silver, uh, brass, nickel, copper. All my rings and uh, everything is made from uh, flat sheet, uh, silver, wire I forged out and everything done by hand using no power tools. I'm gonna be soldering the silver uh, ring shank to the, the base here. When it's up to temperature, the flux will actually go clear, and that's how I know that the solder is about to flow. I get inspiration from a little bit of everything. Um, depending, some watches I'll do uh, based on like a video game, Bioshock, it's a song, songbird watch. Um, others are just doodles. I'll doodle and see a, a cluster of lines that look like something. I'm like, okay, and so I refine that until I see a watch out of it that I can construct. All my watch bands are hand cut, hand dyed, hand stitched. I like to make each band match and reflect the timepiece itself. I spend about as much time with the, the leather work as I do actually making the piece. Since I was little, my mom always had me in art classes because she knew that I wouldn't be fulfilled if I had just a normal nine to five. So she always went out of her way to feed that desire for artistic creativity. Starting in art school, I took just classes on everything, ended up getting a uh, degree with an emphasis in metals. I can shape it, move it, use hammers to make it twist and turn however I want it to go. I have stations all over because I, you know, when the rings are in the pickle getting cleaned, I'm over here working on the leather for the watches, or I'm back over here polishing something. Some rings take a couple hours. Um, there's a watch that I just finished. Um, five of them took 108 hours to construct from start to finish. Well, after uh, seeing it as flat sheet metal and raw materials and burnt up and I finally get to clean it up and polish it and it just feels invigorating. People just feel joy, like uh, somebody will come up and put a ring on and they'll, they'll just look at it and they'll be in awe of it and kind of you can see them glow a little bit and then they'll pull their friends over and say, oh look at this. With the watches, you could see them kind of catch somebody's eye across the room and then they'll come over kind of like a squirrel, just come over and check it out and look at it. And so then they, they get all fancy and they, they do all the different model poses. Every day I wake up afraid and happy that I'm living my dream. Okay, the best place to shop for a timepiece from EXCP, which means exquisitecorpseboutique.com, is online. Okay, now we're gonna head to Canton for some wearable art. Letterpress just makes letterpress printed by hand, one at a time, by me. Greeting cards, seasonal cards, art prints and posters, sketchbooks, coasters, basically anything that can go in the press I can print on. The process of what makes something letterpress printed versus you know something that's offset printed or digitally printed or um, screen printed is it actually makes an impression with a plate or um, some type. It's a different way of printing than really any other way. So today we are actually printing some letterpress business card coasters for print and press. The rollers come up, they get ink on them, the ink disc revolves so that the ink stays fresh. The rollers come over the chase, they ink up the form, and all of this is happening, but it's essentially the relatively simple process of these two pieces coming together in a clamshell that makes the impression on the paper or other material that you're printing on. I acquired Big Sal, my 1963 Chandler and Price letterpress printing press. I was lucky enough to find her in a basement in North Canton, got her for free, hauled her up out of there, and we've been together ever since. And it's a learning experience every day. Mm -hmm. 
We recently launched our own storefront in the Canton Arts District, my husband Doug and I, and our partners at Little Chicago Clothing Company, Greg and Amy Eibel, have opened a storefront in the front portion of our working printer studio. Little Chicago Clothing, we specialize in creating designs that ins are inspired by community pride. There were never any cool shirts for Canton, and it's enjoying this awesome revitalization and with the, the new things happening with the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the redevelopment of the downtown area and the Canton Arts District, we wanted to be able to have people wear something that showed off their community pride. And there were great companies for Cleveland and Columbus, um, but there wasn't anything for Canton. And we just kept waiting and waiting. And then we just decided, well, fine, we'll just do it ourselves. <laughs> and we did. Little Chicago happens to be a nickname for Canton, Youngstown, Steubenville, a lot of Eastern Ohio towns it, that gained that during Prohibition in the Roaring Twenties because this corridor along Route 30 was a frequent stop for the mob and gangsters en route between New York and Chicago. We wanted to pay a little bit of homage to the history of this region. When I see somebody walking down the street with one of our shirts on, it's just the most exciting and reassuring thing to know that there are those people out there who have that enthusiasm for Canton and pride in their community like we do. So it's a very rewarding thing. I think it's an amazing thing anytime something that you made is something that someone's willing to pay money for. Someone's willing to give you their hard-earned dollars for something you made with your own hands. And no matter what you make, that's a cool thing. Print and Press Shop and Studios is located in Canton on 4th Street Northwest. Okay, coming up after the break, how about a little shop that's making a big difference? Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. We're focusing on homegrown success in Northeast Ohio. And our next stop takes us to the work of local artists and the talents of artists from around the world. Well, the Market Path is a fair trade store here in Highland Square. It's a mission of First Grace Church. We wanted to create a mission that would be helpful to other folks, obviously, but also introduce fair trade to Akron, Ohio. My simplest definition of fair trade is that when a crafter is discovered, instead of um, saying to them, I like that and I'll give you 10 cents for it and I want a thousand by Christmas, you know. The crafters approached and said, I really like that. How much would you like for that? What, what is it worth to you? And so the crafters are in control right from the very beginning. Most everything is south of the equator. That's, that's one of the hallmarks. Although we do have some products right here from Akron, Ohio that meet uh, the criteria of, of uh, fair trade. We are working with uh, Bhutanese women who are being resettled in North Akron. There are many refugee communities coming here to Akron. There's women from the Karen community. Uh, they supply product to us. And then we're also working with a couple other agencies in the community. This product over here, this uh, silver cover product is actually aluminum. He takes whole um, aluminum engine blocks from cars that are, are no longer functional. He puts them into this blast furnace, melts it down, and then the product is made from um, uh, stamping a wooden carved piece into wet sand the molten aluminum is poured in there and it creates the object. We have jewelry here that is made from the nut of a palm tree. The paper is uh, called poo poo paper and it's actually made from what you might think from that, elephant dung. This is collected and boiled down and, and then uh, made into paper. We pride ourselves in being able to tell the story that goes in the background of that, of that product. And some of the products, they do supply us actually with little tags that also tell part of the story of where that product comes from and how it's, how it's made. With the cold weather coming on, um, people will, become, will be interested, I hope, in knowing that we're, our alpaca is starting to arrive 
and uh, that is a very popular item. Uh, two winters ago when it was so cold we had to reorder alpaca as a matter of fact because it goes out the door so rapidly. I think for customers the big piece is, is that they are now participating with somebody that they may and probably will never meet but they are helping them create a living for themselves. The Market Path is located in the Highland Square area of Akron. Okay, now it's time to move from Akron to Lakewood for something sweet. Well, I custom cake, we do all kinds of cakes and cupcakes and everything for every kind of special occasion. Um, we specialize and we use a lot of fresh fruit and a lot of real simple flavors, but really delicious. Like fresh lime is one of our best sellers and cookie dough. And we do a lot of like caramel raspberry and everything we do, we make in-house. So we even make our own sprinkles and our caramel sauce and stuff like that. Lala is because when me and my husband met, I was singing at church, so he used to call me Lala, and then we were thinking of a business name. <laughs> we are like, why not? <laughs> I went to culinary school, and I worked in a lot of restaurants for savory side cooking, and then when I was getting a little bit older and getting married and having kids, I wanted something that I could do at home, and I got into baking a couple years into my career, and took a couple cake decorating classes and kind of loved it and then kind of started from there and that's how Lala Custom Cake was born. I like to keep them pretty simple so when we come up with a new flavor I try to do it um, like the lime is all fresh lime zest, lime juice and it's kind of simple but then it's just really powerful and limey flavors so kind of keeping them true to the name um, and then I have one of our other best sellers is a cookie dough, and that was came about because I was looking for a fun flavor for kids to bring to an event, and then it kind of took off from there, and that's probably one of my best sellers to date is my, our cookie dough cupcake. We started, and it was overwhelming at home just to make two or three dozen sometimes with the kids around, and it just as the business kind of grew, I kind of got better at um, doing larger quantities, and then we were in, uh, a shared kitchen space for a little while and then this came available. So now it's, it's been really great. We have a ton of space in the kitchen so we can really take on more production and we are currently hiring some staff to kind of work the counters and be open longer hours. So it's been really exciting. As the chef in me is hoping they bite into it and then their world stops and they say, ah, oh, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. But this is a really good cupcake moment. <laughs> La La Custom Cake is on Madison Avenue in Lakewood. Okay, coming up after the break, it's the story of Felted Soap. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. Our next business got started with a gift. Well, I'll let her explain. It's Betsy of Simply Betsy. class it's like wow this is really cool um, I came home put the soap in the closet didn't really think of it anymore and we had guests over for the holidays and I was like oh my god I gotta give them a gift I you can't come over and I not give you a gift and I gave them a bar of soap they took my soap regifted it to their mother who only used all natural soaps and she loved it they turned around and invested in us, and that's how I started doing Simply Betsy Company. It's all natural, handcrafted. We do everything here by hand, and we try and purchase items that are from local people. We get flower clippings, herbs from local farmers, community gardens, you know, I have customers that sometimes bring me bunches of herbs that we use in our soaps. Um, I don't use any animal byproducts in my soaps. Everything is vegan based. We're wrapping the felt around the soap. Felted soap is incredible because I wanted to use something that can be used again. Felted soap helps to exfoliate your body, but after the soap is gone, you can use the felt to scrub out your sinks. My Ohio bar is my pride and joy of soaps. I wanted to create a soap that took pride in the fact that we live here in Cleveland, Ohio, that I am a proud Clevelander. The creator of the mold 
actually is from Bay Village. So I was like, oh, so cool. And it's local, so we stuck with the state of Ohio. And I make soap in Ohio. I'm an Ohio soaper. We have Love Yourself loofah that we've been making for years. We use all essential oils in Love Yourself loofah. They help to relax your muscles and your feet, your tissues, and it also has essential oils that brighten your toenails. Um, summer is approaching. It's so important to keep up your pedicures and you just use Love Yourself loofah on your feet when you shower or bathe and you've got a pedicure right there. When you see Simply Betsy, I want you to realize we're a manufacturing company. We're bringing manufacturing back to the city of Cleveland, Ohio. You can shop for Simply Betsy products online. Now here's another spot with a lot of heart. It's called Olive My Heart. This is a taste room, Olive My Heart. You can taste anything in here. It's ultra premium extra virgin olive oil and then the infused have extra virgin olive oil base to it, but there's a flavoring in it. We also have fused extra virgin oils that are quality of a blood orange fused with an olive at the time of press. Then we have a multitude of flavored balsamic vinegars, all from Modena, Italy, and you can taste about 60 different quality oils or vinegars in the store as you peruse the three rooms. There's also spices and pastas, and we have recipes all over the place, and you can taste at the very end, we usually offer people ice cream, a balsamic sundae, and they look at me like, mm, and we pour vinegar over the top of the ice cream. But in the other room right now, we can probably have goat cheese with lavender, which is a really good hit at a party for a simple appetizer, but you don't have to do very much. Uh, pesto, using fresh pesto, but you can also use the basil, olive oil, and it will lower your cholesterol, which is very heart healthy. Some of them taste like tomato, some taste like grass. Some of them will pick up eucalyptus or a banana or an apple in the air because of where it's cross-pollinating and in the groves with other things sitting around in the air that God grows. Anyway, um, we also have them taste the Tuscan and traditional, which is an 18 year, aged up to 18 years, because a lot of people understand that with dipping bread at a restaurant. Uh, we brought, bring them in here and we'll taste like the cranberry pear, which they think that's kind of odd, and cranberry pear will go lovely with the blood orange oil, and we start doing pairings. There is thousands of combinations that you can come up with to put on anything, whether it's fruit uh, in the morning. I usually take olive oil, I mean, I, I take my lemon oil olive oil, and I'll put uh, Greek yogurt, and because it's clean and not much sugar and it's healthier for you, pour the lemon oil in there, put some raspberry vinegar in there, stir it around, and put re fresh raspberries in it. And if you freeze the raspberry, it'll all the parties here. And that's my yogurt in the morning. I don't ever buy little containers of yogurt anymore. Per person, per capita, we use less than a lot of other people because obviously it's not grown in Ohio. But Italy, I mean, they put it on their bean salads, they put it on their fruit salads, they put it on anything you can think of. Um, my husband's marinating ribs tonight. We're smoking some ribs and we're using the chipotle and I think we're using the maple. And we have a rub over in the other room called um, bourbon molasses. So it goes a long way and you need a third less olive oil than you do use butter, uh, the, uh, vegetable oil or canola oil, any other kind of oil, it's a third less of olive oil. So you're not gonna use as much to get the job done. I want to give something back to the world that before I de my demise, basically to say, here's how to stay healthy. And I wanted to start with the young children and teach them. And that's why this is more of a tasting teaching store than anything else. All of my heart is on Darrow Road on the Hudson Stowe border. Okay, jump in the car. We're headed to Painesville to shop in the city. Shop in the City is a job work site for adults with disabilities. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. We are owned by Lake County Educational Service Center. We have a program called Vocational Solutions for Adults. Hi. How are you? Count the drawer, take out the garbage, help customers with um, what we sell in the store, like our local products and stuff like that, and give them input. Um, tissue paper in the bags and print out the receipts and that kind of stuff too. You see what this yeah. is? It's pizza. These are the cutest things. Damn fun. I see the customers. 
I give them what they want, and we tell them the total of the cost. And how many did she get? 350. How many pizzas did two. she get? She got two. Very good. Now we'll just wait until she's done shopping, right? Okay. All of our art in the store is from Paintsville or Fairport Harbor. And our other products, we concentrate on Lake Geauga and Ashtabula County. Are these for you? These are mine. These are. A lot of people think we're a gift shop, which we could be considered that. I tried to get staples in here like coffee, jams and jellies, popcorn, chocolate, things that people might need on a daily basis or once a week. So Al, tell me who's back here with you today. Um, Ray, Chris, and Brandon. Brandon likes Wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, me too. The WWE? Yeah. Go Browns. <laughs> we do make things in the store as well. We try to come together and pick items to make that help with fine motor skills and but are really kind of different and neat. This flag was my idea to put a flag together for the shop in city. To me, I think what we do here is empowering everybody that works here to make them believe that they can be the best they can be. Me, I'm going to be a co-host for the news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably one of the luckiest people in the world. I consider myself very blessed. I come to work every day and I'm happy to come to work every day. I'm surrounded by beauty, first of all, which is great, because I could never afford to have all these pictures in my house. I have the best staff anybody could ever want. It's the best job I could ever have. I mean, it truly is. I thank God every day. I say, hi, Daddy. <laughs> Shop in the City is located in downtown Painesville, right on the square. When we return, it's a little lovely something. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. This next place is a twist on a very old art. Letter writing. Lovely Somethings, we call it a modern paper boutique, but it's really, we have gifts, but it's really focusing on paper and stationery and the art of bringing back the handwritten note. I think it's just really important to remember people. We're so consumed with ourselves every day to just send a note. And really all you have to do is write hi on it or I'm thinking about you. And just to get that back from someone else really makes an impact on your lives. I think it's just the personal aspect of it, but it's the surprise of getting something in the mail, like that connection and just writing the note. It's really the personality behind it and the thoughtfulness and being grateful with thank you notes and that type of thing, not losing that. I feature artists from around the country and they're all professional artists. We focus on letterpress, we have the trendy gold foil, we do lots of wedding invitations and that type of thing too. We carry people from Rifle Paper Company who was started by Anna Rifle, and they just started in their garage. A lot of these people have started on Etsy but grown, and the National Stationery Show is a great venue for that. We also have local artists like Joan Colbert, a fine artist here in Akron. Um, and so there is a range, and it's really what strikes my fancy as to what I think the customers will like. There are some that are really sassy is the most appropriate term for it. But then there's others that are just beautiful and they're different than what you see, you know, in the grocery stores and that too, and the quality of them. We have everything from little Ohio blimp coasters that I've designed to pillows for Mother's Day. We have M. Stewart monograms, which are fine linens monogrammed with anything that you'd like for graduation gifts and that type of thing. We even have some beer snob glasses that are shaped like a beer can, which are really fun with tasting papers too. As the wedding industry continues to grow and the resurgence of people wanting to receive something really special in the mail, we do a ton of custom design here. 
um, making elaborate portfolios or making everything totally personal. We have albums from Vera Wang and Haute Papier and Crane and that too. But here at Lovely Somethings, we really try and find out what you want for your wedding and then tailor your designs around that. As far as workshops go, we have a wide range, everything from the new swoopy style of modern calligraphy to embroidering, again, the state of Ohio shapes. And we just had one where you're making giant paper flowers too, which are really fun. So they're craft based, but mostly surrounding the paper idea. So what you wanna do is lay the template on to figure out the spot you like on the paper, whether it be We're the flowers. up in the lovely somethings loft, and here's where we have workshops in calligraphy and other things like hand lettering. We have Lisa Lorick, an amazing artist from Cleveland, come down and lead us through different drawings. For example, home isn't a place, it's a feeling. So you're exploring different typography and learning how to do swoops. And we have fun little explorations with different kind of markers, lighter and softer strokes. I've tried to make the store really a sense of community too. Um, Moms come in with their kids, the kids know to go visit the little candy counter, and the moms can take a minute and just relax. The pink walls make people feel at home, and it's really just chatting with everybody, and the correspondence again, like you're talking face on face rather than ordering something online. Having a little shop is pretty special. Lovely Somethings is located in Bath Township. Okay, now it's time to head to Tremont where vintage is taking on a whole new life. Meet Miranda of Miranda's Vintage Bridal. I have always loved to sew. I started sewing when I was really little. My mom sewed, my grandmother sewed. So my mom taught me the basics of hand sewing and machine stitching when I was probably six or seven. I was pretty little. And that's just a skill that always followed me through life. Vintage, it just has, it's nice for the dress to be able to live a whole new life. I mean, these gowns, they're gorgeous. They've only been worn one time. It's nice for them to get to live another life. Usually there's very little things that you can do to make the dress more modern. Oftentimes I remove a sleeve, open a neckline, and it looks like a brand new dress. I pull a lot of inspiration from classic movies. I like to blend classic styles with modern styles so you have a very modern, unique look. All of the vintage gowns, they range in era from the early 1900s to about the early 1980s. And then there are a selection of gowns that are a combination of a new and a vintage gown. This gown, the skirt is a modern skirt. It's a duchess silk satin. And the bodice is from a gown from the 1980s, the early 1980s. So I've combined them together to create kind of a classic um, but modern, yet vintage look. I don't only just do bridal here. There are a lot of accessories, vintage and new accessories. There's headpieces, outerwear, vintage party dresses that can be used for any special occasion, not just for the wedding. Their collection of veils. This is a cathedral, a Lanson French lace veil by Priscilla of Boston from the 1960s. There's also a collection of new veils that are locally designed, and then they are made fair trade in India. All of this is done by hand. I get my inventory from all over. I call it just kind of a constant treasure hunt. I love to go out antiquing. I get a lot of calls and emails from people who live in the Cleveland area who have a dress that they would like to sell from their family. That's probably my favorite way because then I can meet the family members and I can know exactly the era that it came from, the wedding date, hear a little history. It's just such a happy time in people's lives. It's nice to be able to share a part in that, the joy of someone's wedding.
Miranda's Vintage Bridal is on 14th Street. That's West 14th Street in Tremont. Okay, when we return, it's the style that speaks for itself. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. You'd expect to find this next shop in Ireland, not downtown Cleveland. They're turning heads at Kilted Brothers. We started Kilted Bros about a year and a half ago. Uh, both of us, Jefferson and I, have been wearing kilts for a little over 10 years. And we were talking about the different places that, you know, we were buying our kilts from. I turned to Jefferson and I said, you know, my grandmother taught me how to draft. I know how to make clothes. Why aren't we doing this ourselves? And we came up with the idea of kilted bros. So there's one on one side and then two on the other. We started wearing kilts. I mean, if you go back biblical times, Egyptian times, Phoenician times, nobody wore pants. It, it didn't make any sense. You, you needed to be active. So you threw on a, a, a garment that wrapped around you and you went. And that developed over the years. Men didn't start wearing pants until we started riding horses because of all the chafing going on. Scots borrowed from the Irish as far as the structure of the, of the, uh, the garment, but the tartans are traditionally Scottish. They're the original gang colors, if you will, and they told a story of each family and where that person came from and their wealth and their status. So we created our own tartans. We have a Pride of Cleveland tartan that is specifically for the city of Cleveland. We registered them with the Scottish Registry of Tartans and we're the only ones who can produce those. There's a community here of kilt wearers and people who didn't even know they were kilt wearers until they come in and actually put the thing on. So essentially they're gonna wrap around you like a bathrobe with a couple of snaps, by and large. Uh, I'm wearing a cargo kilt, that's the way that these work. The tartans, the plaids work pretty much the same way. Um, sizing is not the same as pant sizes. With your waist size and your drop size, we can build a kilt for you either in one of the traditional cargos or one of the tartans. If you're wearing one of the tartans, there's no pockets in them, so you need a place to carry all your stuff. Um, so you wear a sporin, or some people call it sporan, or as we call it, the Scottish fanny pack. So it's a little bag that holds everything in the front, you open it up, you pop all your good stuff in, and you're set to go. In Cleveland, weather tends to get a little windy, so you don't want everything flopping up all over the place. So we have kilt pins and that kind of weighs down that front apron. I do have some women who come through and I will build kilts for women. Measurements are a little bit different. I've got teenagers who have come in here just thought that they were too cool. Uh, we've got a kilt special going on right now for people who just want to wear something for St. Patrick's Day. I've got a whole bunch of folks who, who are into alternative types of things and they just want uh, Comic-Con cosplay stuff. We're there for them as well. And then there's people like me who just don't want to wear jeans anymore. People ask me when I wear a kilt, what's underneath my kilt? It depends. I normally just tell them my boots and my socks. Belts, socks, all kinds of other great stuff, it's all here. You can find Kilted Brothers inside the 5th Street Arcade. And guess what? That's going to do it for today's show. And if you want to list a complete list of all the homegrown businesses we talked about, just go to fox8.com. I'm David Moss, and I'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland.